As many of you may know, my second favourite flat earther is CC Chris from New York, Westchester County. But some of you may not know who my favourite flat earther is. That crown belongs to Anthony Bear. His models and demonstrations have provided this channel with some much needed humour at times. And for a little Christmas treat, he's back with another one, bless him. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Before we begin with today's video though, I was reading earlier how the Comet 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth this month, and I was reading that story on Ground News, which was actually founded by a former NASA engineer called Harleen Kaur, who worked on the James Webb Space Telescope. Now, Ground News combines stories and articles from thousands of outlets, local and national, in one place so readers can see the full picture of what's being reported around the world. As you can see here, Ground News shows you if there are any political leanings for each publication. And in this instance, with the 3i Atlas Comet story, we can see that it's mainly centre driven with 70 total news sources. Now for every story, you get a quick visual breakdown of the news outlook covering it, what their political bias is, how factual the source is, which entity owns that source, and which countries are covering the story. Now, Ground News is also gaining notoriety for its work. They were recently recognised by the Nobel Peace Centre for their impact on media literacy, saying it's an excellent way to stay informed, avoid echo chambers and expand your worldview, which is exactly why we use Ground News too. You can see every side to every story and get access to international perspectives that are hard to find. So then you can make informed decisions where you can read, watch and share the best information available. And Ground News is also mission centric. It's not about about eliminating bias but providing better transparency. Plus they're funded by the community, not by big ads or investors. Just go to ground.news slash Simon to stay fully informed on breaking news and compare media coverage. Click the link in the description to subscribe and get 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. Right then, on with today's video, which as you know from the intro, comes from flat earther Anthony Bear. Yes, this is the flat earther who once made a video butt naked and showed his dim reflection whilst doing so. No nakedness today, I'm afraid, but Anthony is trying to understand great circles, which is good for him. Will he grasp it though? Let's find out. So I remember taking a flight from Detroit to Rome, and I remember flying over Greenland, and I'm thinking, wow, that seems to be like way out of the way so i looked it up to make sure i remembered right and it says yes you, you could fly over greenland or near green, greenland that's the most efficient way using the great circle route okay let's look at the geometry of a ball so the great circle is the largest circle possible on a sphere and if you follow that great circle path that's the shortest distance from point a to point b makes total sense and indeed it does, because if we look at the great circle route between Detroit and Rome, you can do this on several different websites, by the way, we can see that it does indeed go close to Greenland. And when you look from above, you can see this is a straight path. Okay, so let's make our own great circle on this uh, globe. Now, I took a piece of cardboard and I cut a hole in the middle of it. You can see I got it on the equator right now, so it makes a straight line. Okay, so here's our great circle. We cut in the cardboard. I marked Detroit and Rome right there on the globe. Now let's connect the two dots with the great circle because that's the shortest path, right? And uh, you can see the globe is split in half. So here's the great circle. We got the we got the globe split in half. Now, why would you take this route over Greenland and waste fuel? I mean, obviously, it's farther that way. Okay, a couple of things to note here. Yes, your cardboard great circle cutter thing looks okay, but it may not be exactly lined up through the middle of your globe there. However, airlines don't always fly the shortest distances. They fly the fastest and safest, sometimes using jet streams and avoiding weather. A northern arc with a strong tailwind often burns less fuel, not more. That is certainly what could have happened on the flight that you took. And uh, a few ge geometry majors, like, here, prove me wrong. Like, what did I do wrong here? And uh, if you're a pilot, if you took off on this course, wouldn't you have to start turning right all the time? If you took off on this course right here, wouldn't you have to start turning right all the time to get to Italy? Is that what you guys do, keep turning right? 
If you take a more northerly jet stream assisted route, you won't be turning right all the time. You're flying a different great circle track or a wind optimized one that's close to a great circle. Once you're on it, the plane flies smoothly along its path. The jet stream is a fast moving river of air. The aircraft would adjust its heading to stay in favorable winds and then just fly. Yes, your compass heading changes slowly over a long flight. That is expected on a curved surface. A changing heading does not mean continuous turn. The plane is still locally straight relative to the earth beneath it. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, so let's check it out on the AE map, flat earth map. And look, here's Detroit. And then here's Italy right there. And it goes right over Greenland. So it makes more sense on a flat earth map, right? The center of the AE map is the least distorted part. The distortion increases the further you move outward. That's why routes at the top of the map there look neat and intuitive, whilst routes in the southern hemisphere look completely unhinged. Detroit and much of Europe sits relatively close to the map's center, so paths between them appear shorter and more reasonable. Let me show you something. Uh, I had a hunch. Uh, so let's say you want to take a, a flat earth and wrap it around and make it into a ball. So as you wrap it around the ball, things would, be, would become distorted, correct? So let's see what the distortion is. Okay, so let's go to our flat earth map, and we're going to put a north line down. And then we'll, let's check our angle of our flight path. Let's zoom in here and take a look. And we got uh, 42 and a half degrees. Now let's lay out the lines on the globe. Let's look at the degrees on the globe. So we're real close to about 49 degrees. So the difference between the two different maps is about six and a half degrees. So I looked it up and on a flight from Detroit to Rome, in the beginning, it is minus seven degrees. <laughs> so we're like right there. What's the chance of that? What's the coincidence of that? Six and a half and there we're at minus seven here. Come on. You can't wrap a flat earth map onto a ball and expect angles to survive. The AE map is not an unwrapped globe. It's an azimuthal projection. That means distances, angles, and directions are selectively distorted by design. You don't get to reverse engineer reality by eyeballing it back onto a sphere. And that difference in angles you had there is meaningless. He's measuring different things with different coordinate systems. An angle on a projected map is not the same as a heading on the globe. Those quantities are not conserved under projection. This is a shambles, Anthony, it really is. By the way, declination is the difference between true north and magnetic north. So as you can see, the real path lines up with the flat earth map. Now, the difference in navigation between the, the real map and the fake globe is called declination. Magnetic declination is the angle between true north and magnetic north. That's it, full stop. It's got nothing to do with flat maps versus the globe. And it does not correct a spherical worth into a flat one. Declination exists because Earth is a globe with a tilted moving magnetic field. It varies by location and changes over time. If the Earth were flat with a central point in the north, declination would behave completely differently. In many places, it wouldn't even work at all. So you get the idea. So hang around if you want to see one more. The shortest distance between two points is called a great circle. If you're flying from Los Angeles to Tokyo, that path doesn't go straight across the Pacific. Instead, it curves up over Alaska. On a flat map, it looks like a detour. On a globe, it's the quickest way pilots follow these great circle routes to save hours of flight time and thousands of gallons of fuel. So the guy's talking about a flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo. And uh, he says it goes over Alaska, but yes, it does on a flat Earth map. Take a look. Okay, here's our great circle again. We split the globe in half, and uh, there's Los Angeles right there, right on Los Angeles, California. We cruise over here to Tokyo, right on Tokyo, and you can see, not even close to going over. Alaska. The Great Circle Route does not work like he said.
When people say LA to Tokyo goes over Alaska, they're describing how the Great Circle route appears on a flat map projection. On the globe, that same route is a smooth arc over the Pacific, which passes near Alaska, but not directly over it. Ironically, his LA Tokyo example is one of the strongest confirmations of the globe. On the AE map, that route should be far longer than observed flight times. In reality, the durations match globe-based predictions perfectly. Dear oh dear, Anthony. Let's take our measurements. Okay, check it out on a flat Earth map. We got 141. Los Angeles to Tokyo on a globe. We got uh, 129. 141 minus uh, 129 is 12 degrees. And I looked it up, and it's 11.42 degrees. <laughs> We're so close. Willingly or unwittingly, it seems to me like the Great Circle route is a bunch of hype. It gives the illusion that we live on a ball. What do you guys think? Great Circle routes are not hype. They are literally how GPS, inertial navigation, flight planning software, satellite tracking, and maritime navigation work. All at once, all the time, without disagreement. If your little angle trick meant anything, the method would work everywhere but I can guarantee you it doesn't. Try South America to Australia and the differences will explode. Flight times, distances and bearings will stop matching immediately. That's why this trick is never applied globally. And that is where we're gonna wrap up this video today from Anthony. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of his performance there and his little model. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thank you so much for watching today as ever. It's appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Ground News for sponsoring today's video. Go to ground.news slash Simon, stay fully informed on breaking news and compare media coverage. Subscribe through my link in the description to get 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.